Oh, neutral jump to the rescue. Big four. Oh, he chipping her out. Oh, yeah. Chips ahoy. Stop, 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 stop. Allen and stop. To the moon. To the moon. Hit her with the Jackie Gleason. Mm. Listen, man. Paladin just knows how to become a champion. Punk is in trouble. Yeah, out of the corner at least. Still has work to do. Back to the snake. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh my god! That was god. a delay and a half! Is this it? Is this actually gonna be enough damage? Is this gonna kill? It's not! He lives! Just barely, Punk is alive. Capcom Cup hopes are alive no longer as Paladin with a 3 0 will send Punk out of the tournament. No way, dude. Going into this fight, I wanted to make sure I had a lot of matchup notes on hand. And yeah. I also studied him very much beforehand. Some of the things I noticed was that he enters offense sometimes with a whip that may not come into play. But that was what I was kind of looking for during this time, like this period. Also, since Bison doesn't have a wake-up reversal, I can throw him and then walk up and throw again. Something like that. Or drive rush and throw again. So you can see in this fight, I throw him, and since Bison doesn't have the reversal, re since, since Bison doesn't have the reversal, then I can do this. And push that type of offense on him heavily. So, like, almost any knockdown mid-stage has the threat of that behind it. Of me dry rushing to throw up, throw again, then dry rush again, throw again. Here, I think it was bad execution on my side. He just overheaded me. So earlier in the set, he did a parry on my drive rush up at him. So when yeah. I had thrown him and then I drive rushed up at him and throw him threw him again, it landed as a punish counter, and there was a little bit of a blue effect. So that gave me a feeling that he'd react to my drive rush with a parry. So then here in neutral, I pushed it again. Knowing that I'd be kind of chilling. I'll rewind. So that was a frame kill. When I did that AP. Right here. If I do another crouch medium, it's gonna be meaty. So that's to bait him into pairing again. Oh, okay, okay. Because most other players are aware of that meta where the frame kill means a meaty attack is coming. That's me pushing the drive rush offense again. <laughs> After getting hit with that air to air that he just did, and knowing that he has level 2, I was kind of screwed. So, wake up level 3 is viable here. Because I'm about to be in burnout. Oh, I died. <laughs> But either way, it's, 
terrible situation. Almost checkmate. Donkey Kick is good in this matchup as Ryu. I should have remembered that going into the set immediately. So these jabs, I, I kind of took them from Japanese players. A lot of Japanese Akumas, they approach this matchup by whipping stand jab a lot. So I took inspiration from them and started whipping stand jab. Looks like one of them did. Lights in general, I guess. As you can see, I was doing stand light kick, but then I went for a yeah. stand jab. I was kind of reminded of it when he did this. He did a stand jab around here. That reminded me of it. And then I reciprocated. That's zero unblock Bison Stand Medium Punch. So I took my turn there and did a DRC. So I could push this type of offense. The threat of the corner. Notice how he back jumped. If I had level 1, I could have reacted and hit him with a level 1 middle. So now I'm pushing Hashogeki, and I want to be careful because if he's not falling for it, he can whip punish me. See? So it worked in my favor that time, but let's say he doesn't fall for it, I can get swept. It's a reset. Ooh, nice. He hasn't responded well to my dashes the entire set. That was an input error, the Dengin charge. So if you look very closely, I was actually in the early frames of a jab. If you do a meaty jab, or well-timed jab, then you can cancel the startup frames into a parry. So here, it was a jab. I don't have inputs on, someone told me to. So let's rewind here. Looks like I did a medium punch, not a jab. But the jab OS is real. You can cancel your jab into a parry. The medium punch... I don't know. Let's see. Advanced frame. It was a delay medium punch, and I pressed it after the screen freeze. So I was okay. So my medium punch didn't come out because this animation was playing. Here, a level 1, because it's good damage, and also, I'm gonna try and push the stun. And I don't want to overcommit with my level 3. So if I'm going to go for a stun anyway, I know I'm chilling. So you could see him buffering his, I believe, level 2 here. So that gave me the immediate cue to hit him low. Because if you're buffering, you're not going to be crouching the entire time. So it hit, and then I immediately went into drive impact. So it was like a, a, a little safety net for my drive impact. Because I wanted to stun him. But I also want to make sure that you know, I can catch him. So, although it, I could have gone just straight into it, this kind of helped the unpredictability of it. Because he got hit low and he immediately stops buffering. I was going to ask you, so as a Ryu main, as a Ryu main, how would you approach this matchup against Bison? Conceding a neutral so that 
it's harder for him to place his scissor kicks or at least mixing up my approaches in neutral. So there's a risk of his scissor kick whiffing or it being mm -hmm. blocked from too close. Then okay. for his air stomps, I like to air to air it or crouch heavy punch anti air it. Most of it is him taking the lead and me saying, and then me trying to find out where his lead is flawed. Okay, interesting, interesting. So if I see like he has a good game plan, but then his foundation is weak, then I would have to target that foundation. It's not really like most matchups where you might just have a direct game plan like hey let's zone for me here it's like i'm gonna be playing defensive neutral uh getting myself to the corner and once i'm in the corner if i've done it right then my drcs are more threatening and it's kind of like leaving a whole purposeful hole in your game plan so that he can overextend so although i'm i'm cornering myself what i'm doing is also making him feel like he can overextend. And if he does, then there's a lot more on the line than just getting him hit mid-stage versus pushing an Oki or a strike throw mix-up where if he gets back thrown, I can make a comeback. Outside of what I just told you, it comes down to execution. Just making sure I'm not getting randomed out, which is pretty difficult in this game. Yeah, very difficult. Is the neutral RPS or the, the neutral situation is going to be typically losing, but if he overextends then it doesn't really matter. No, that was nice. So good, good ex I could have killed him there, by the way. If I did another DRC. That, this was a mistake here, not killing him. I had enough drive gauge. So, I like to push EX Hashogeki here. To chip their drive gauge. Looks like I just did two EX fireballs, which is also not so bad because it, it gives me a lot of control and I don't have to commit to a walk up button. So it's like if they're close to burnout, then EXs are on the table. That's bad execution on my side here, because I just got hit low, and there was almost no purpose for it. It, it was preventable. Maybe he was reading that I wanted to walk back there, but again, I could have prevented that by just keeping my distance. Heavy donkey kick is here, because it makes them have to look out for something. So... The immediate answer is that they end their offense and look to perfect parry or end their offense and then forward jump, which puts them at a risk that's pretty large. Because if it fails, then they lose their entire momentum. Basically forcing them to concede to continue. That's why players like like Guile players sometimes spam booms as they're cornered because now it means that you have to jump at them in order to continue. Even even though they know they might get hit or will probably get hit, the meta of having to concede to continue 
is really tricky to work around because you have to convince yourself that it's gonna pay off. So when I'm cornered, my escapes are typically a bit risky, but in the sense of my opponent has to do something at the very least to counter it, and it's not something that they can passively counter. Jumping out of the corner would be something along the lines of that too, but it's so telegraphed and people are so prepared that I wouldn't say that you, you'd be guaranteed to get out. I'm not sure if I'm going to play Duel Academy. I don't know how, how I'll feel, I'll be honest. Why are you asking? Yeah, so Paladin, so I've got a couple of questions that mm -hmm. want to be asked by viewers as well, mm -hmm. if you don't mind asking them. So the first question that I've got is, what are the best ways for Ryu to deal with Bison's aerial attacks like Devil Reverse and Head Stomp? That's wait. the first question that I've got in. Got it. So you want to wait for Bison's animation to change, because if he can do an empty Head Stomp, but you want to wait till either you see him go for the stomp before you go for your crouch heavy punch or for him to go for devil's reverse before you go into crouch heavy punch at least something okay. I, it may be okay. tricky but it's not too crazy uh, also another thing is like the stomp is so hard to see that if you block or by the time that you may try to react to it, you may have just OS'd it, and now you've blocked it. By that time where you block the rules reverse, you can jump in air to air. That's a pretty hard thing to explain without visuals, but... And also the second question is, what spacing does Ryu need to maintain to, maintain to avoid Bison's pressure while still applying his own pressure? Uh, about this distance that I have right now, right after throw. It's tricky because his advantage is super slight, but around here is going to be the best range. You don't want to be too close. Oh, okay. You want to be right outside of his five hard punch range, his, his stand heavy punch, which is one of his offensive tools. You also want to try and maintain that range at all costs, even if you're losing space on the street. Uh, not stream <laughs> on the <that> stage. <laughs> yeah, of course. I tried to jump out and it didn't accomplish much. EX stumped. Oh, the corner pressure. And it's actually pretty funny because my next question was about corner pressure. And, um,. He wanted to know what are the best defensive options for Ryu when he's being cornered by Bison. Drive reversal. Drive reversal, okay. Yeah. So if you block like a stomp, you drive reversal. Also, trying to prolong the match as long as you can is really useful. Taking your time pays off heavily here. It takes a lot of execution and endurance to keep that up. But if you are prepared for it, then it makes your consistency better. Or that's what I've seen from practicing it. That I've gotten more consistent from letting the match go and leveraging that slight advantage Ryu has at certain reaches. It's very, very small. It's like a whisper. To the point where for a very long time I didn't even know it was there. So here... Look how I got my dungeon charge. I recommend dungeon charging when you have a level 2 or level 3 because it's going to make the payoff really high. So here I have a level 3, meaning that if I land a hit, it could be round defining. Very, very large. So look here. Look how this match ends. Because I, I knew that you know, if I have more than 2, it's time to dungeon charge. It's okay to sacrifice the Oki for that dungeon charge. This kills here. And this is a light cross up. That's GG's. Bam. 
man. And I believe that's the end of the set. That's pretty much the full analysis. Yep. So not too much, but... It, no, it was it, great. It's because... No, no, it was great. It was great. Honestly, thank you. It's be it, it wasn't too much information, mainly because mm -hmm. it's more execution revolved and also preparation to just studying other players or watching other players. Uh, on your side, rather than focusing on the opponent as much, just having that good execution. So are there any other good Ryu players that you like to watch from time to time? Mm, no, recently I've just been watching Japan Street Fighter League. Okay. Uh, and then and... Kusanagi, of course. Uh, yeah. Semi. Sekigan Ryu. Yeah, good German player. Yeah, he's good as well. All, all of those Ryus I've watched. But right now... I'm not really watching Ryu because I'm not necessarily a Ryu main anymore. I use so many characters, and Ryu is one of my least played characters, even though he gets pretty high up in tournaments. So if I could, if I could ask, if I was, if I wanted to become a Ryu main, mm -hmm. what five good tips could you give me to become a better player for Ryu in the future? But the tip number one would be take advantage of his simplicity because other players will have to put in a lot more thought into certain things than Ryu does, especially at the early level. Later on, that kind of reverses. It gets more complex for him. But yeah, take advantage of his simplicity. Number two, get DPs. His game plan is easier when you can DP. Mm -hmm. Number three. Mm. Number three, have patience and neutral. I guess that's very generic, but Ryu is one of the characters that take that, that actually gets stronger the match goes on because of his EX Hasho Geki making his offense uh, able to drive gauge chip his opponent very quickly. So if they DRC or let's say you have a necessity of spending your gauge earlier in the match, if you take that time and you let it regenerate, then your offense is going to be a lot better. So his EX Fireball is also very matchup defining too. So use that time to build your drive gauge. The fourth one would be mm, learn how to use donkey kick because donkey kick can knowledge check people and you can just spam it over and over and over. The fifth one is have another character to cover him. And that's pretty much it. That the order can be changed and probably done better. I kind of winged that, but yeah. But um, no, so that's it. So I just want to say thank you, Paladin, for doing this. I really do appreciate it, and mm -hmm. also thank you for thank you for your viewers for having the patience to sit down while you go through the replay analysis. So I also thank you to everyone regarding this. Yeah, no problem. And you know what? It was it was a <laughs> it was the first time for me to even do this. So. You know, it was good that you done most of the talking as well. <laughs> no worries. Uh, for you future know. ones, mm, for future collaborations with other content creators or streamers, try and send them the questions beforehand. I know it's your first yeah, time course, here and also kind of my first time because I was helping you. Uh, Doing it beforehand would make it a bit easier for so, both of us. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, of course, of course, much. of course. So in a way, this is kind of like a like a um a freestyle on for, on both our parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yeah, I think it came out really well, really, really well. So no, I, I hope this gets did. a lot no, of views. It definitely did. It definitely did. It definitely did, man. And obviously, as well, like it's it's good for upcoming Ryu players as well that want to learn the character that struggle in a in a bison matchup as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really do appreciate that. You know, so well, so it paladin so.